All right, here's a fly that we sell an awful lot of at Charlie's Fly Box. And uh, uh, this is one I get asked about all the time. And it's a simple little bug, a uh, cool little emerger called a uh, foam back emerger. Um, and, and there's a few different variations on the theme, but it, they, they all boil down to this sort of simple little um, you know, little profile that I'm about to show you here. Um, so what I've got is a 2487 TMCO. And I've got some brown thread. This is rusty brown, but uh, regular brown would work just fine. And I'm going to start this thread. Um, this is on a size 18. I'm going to start this thread about 75% point. And I'm going to wrap back over it about halfway down the bend of the hook. And once I get there, um, this is this is sort of where the variation comes into it. I've seen this fly tied a couple different ways, commercially even. Um, and either using pheasant tail fibers for the tail or uh, a little shuck of, of Antron or Zelon or Darlon or something like that. Um, and I think either one is fine. I'm going to use some pheasant tail here because it was handy on my desk. So I've got, oh, probably five or six pheasant tail fibers here. And I'm going to tie them in at the bend with just a turn. And then I'm going to pull them down so that they're about a half shank long, fairly short little tail. Once I've got those in, then I can wrap forward over those butt ends. And honestly, with pheasant tail, if you just pull your thread tight and pop it, it'll break right off. Uh, that's the downside of pheasant tails. It's not terribly durable. Uh, so once my thread is there, I'm going to tie in a piece of extra fine copper wire. And I'll wrap back over it, back to the base of the tail as well. Clip that back in my material spring. Now for the body, it's brown dubbing. You could use rabbit or beaver or uh, even super fine dubbing. Um, I've got a little pinch of brown beaver dubbing here. And I'm going to build the body out of this. So I'm going to apply this. Um, and this is kind of a chunky little bodied fly. You know, it's not as, um, you know, commercially as commercially tied. It's it's not as slender as necessarily I would have done it. But it ain't my fly. So I'm just going to do it the way they, uh, they whoever that is. I think we get these from Solitude, Ray Chang at Solitude. Um, but this is how they come. So kind of a chunky little body. I'm going to start that dubbing right at the base of the tail. And I'm going to dub... Darn near right up to the eye, just a little short of the eye. Um, and you can see I've got a little more dubbing than I need there with this beaver dubbing. It's a short fiber, so I can pull it off and just get that out of the way. So then I'm going to take my copper wire and I'm going to spiral wrap it through that body. Just nice, evenly spaced turns. Then I'll tie that off with my thread, get a couple turns on there, and with that fine wire, again, you just pop that and it'll break right out. Got a couple guard hairs sticking out. So, pretty simple little, little fly thus far. So now, I'm going to take a little, everybody asks, comes in and asks at the shop for the, the wing material for uh, a cylinder to tie this fly. You don't need a cylinder of foam. This is just a strip of foam. It's two millimeter foam. I've cut it about two millimeters square. Um, and I want the end to be pretty square there. Um, and I, I, the reason I dubbed the body too far forward is I'm going to overlap back up to about that 75% point. And I'll tie this foam down there. So I'm going to lay it in and just catch that in. And you can see how nicely it'll compress. Like so. And then just another tiny little pinch of dubbing to finish them off. And this is just going to cover that tie off. I'm going to take it, apply my dubbing, and again, pretty thin. That way I can kind of stack it and control the, can control the shape a little better. Probably got more than I need there. But I'm going to start this dubbing at the, just behind the hook eye and dub up to the base of the wing. You can see I'll kind of pull on the wing a little bit. Then I'll come forward and end up right behind the hook eye, and I'll whip finish there. Trim that thread out. A couple unsightly guard hairs that will keep any self-respecting fish from eating it. Boy, I just looked on the screen. I thought that was the thread. That's a that's a guard hair. I need a finer scissor to get that out of there. I thought I screwed up, but then I thought about it and was like, no, that wasn't going to happen. And I was right. Um, so now we're going to trim this wing into just a short little stub. Kind of think like an RS2. Just a short little little stub wing. And that is your finished foam back emerger. 
Um, simple little bug. Um, comes in gray, comes in olive, comes in brown. Brown is by a long shot the most popular. Um, but great little beta sniv. Um, you know, kind of rides mid-water column with that little tiny pinch of foam. Um, that's not really enough to, to float it. You can grease it up and get it to sit in the surface if you're real careful. Um, but simple little fly, sort of variation on an RS2, really. Um, but that's a that's a cool one. That's one I get asked about a lot. So hopefully that uh, that answered some questions. You should tie some of those up and put them in your box and take them fishing and have a good time and smile when you're done. So go do that. Have a good day. Take care.